Hi friends, this is Pastor Bill Bailey from Happy Gospel Church in Bradenton, Florida. Welcome to our weekly telecast today. I believe God has a message and a word for you, and I trust that you'll stay tuned for the next 30 minutes. We've got some great gospel music as well as an anointed message from God's Word. I want to encourage you to connect with us on social media. We're on all the platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and also you can follow our service is live every Sunday morning from right here at Happy Gospel on Facebook and YouTube. Well, let's go into today's message and some great gospel music. I know it will be a blessing to you. We can list the names of those who've done great things. There are doctors and inventors, oh great kings. But there's a name that far exceeds their lofty titles, oh their deeds. Can't keep it quiet. Starts bubbling up like living water. He's boiling it up. Jesus, name above all names. Jesus, forever I proclaim that He is a mighty and victorious, a wonderful and glorious. Jesus, name above all names. No matter what the devil says, He is the name above all names. Now it's the name that calls the dead to live again. It's the name we call upon to heal our land. Throughout the ages it's been raised, and it's worthy to be praised. Can't you be quiet? Starts bubbling up like living water. He's more than enough. Oh, Jesus, name of our own. Glorious, a wonderful and glorious Jesus, name above all names. That name that cleanses a leper and calls the blind to see. That name that parts the water and sets the captive free. That name that died on Calvary and rose up from the grave. That name so high and holy is saving lives today. If you're not ashamed of the gospel tonight, why don't you declare that with us? Would you do that? Here we go. Can't keep it quiet. Starts bubbling up like living water. He's more than enough. Oh, Jesus, name above all names. Jesus, forever I proclaim. He is the mighty and victorious, wonderful and glorious. Jesus, name above all names. I know he's the mighty and victorious, wonderful and glorious. Jesus, name above all names. Romans chapter 5, verse 6, if you're there, say yes. If you're not, just follow the screen. The word of the Lord says, For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Turn to your neighbor and tell him he's talking about you too. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. The key verse is verse number eight. It's really Paul's John 3, 16. And when Paul writes, I love what another translation says, it says, but God demonstrated his love toward us 
that God demonstrated his love. Love is active. It's not passive. Love is aggressive. It's out front. It, love is an action from God that was demonstrated by giving his only begotten son. And I want to talk to you for a few minutes today about that love from God and about that demonstration of God's love. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Speak to us by the Holy Ghost. Help us to hear clearly from you. Lord, we thank you for it, and we give you all the praise because, God, we know you love us. You love us with an everlasting and eternal, for lack of better words, a crazy love. For what some of the young songwriters of our generation have said, Lord, a reckless love. Thank you, Lord, for that love that you have bestowed and demonstrated to us in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen and amen. You may be seated. Tell that person next to you, you look fabulous today. Will you do that? This morning we're talking about the love of God and we're talking about how God demonstrated his love toward us. Gary Smalley wrote a book talking about the love languages. There are five of them where we demonstrate our love to each other. When we study love, we understand there's three different types of love, both biblically and also in generally. There's, there's the, the love that is the agape love. It's the God kind of love. It's a love that gives without an expectation of return. We also understand there is the familial love, which is the love of family, the affection of family. Moms, dads, children, grandparents, aunts, uncles, that, that family kind of love. And then thirdly, we recognize there's also the love that uh, is defined as eros, the love, the, the, the affection of one to another uh, that, that is erotic in its nature. And yes, that is biblical. Everything that you feel that you have been created with is come, does come from God. It's not something that doesn't come from God. God gave that to you. So that eros love, there is a desire for a man to be with a woman and a woman to be with a man. There, there, there is a desire for, for, for the, the eros love. And yet when we get all of that and we understand it in context, we understand that love is demonstrated in many different ways. And yet, no matter how you might define how love would be demonstrated, we understand that God so loved the world that he did what? He gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And a lot of times we don't quote John 3, 17, but it's vital to understand the context of the love of God. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but rather that the world through him might be saved. Now, I've been in church all of my life. I've heard a lot of condemnation in the pulpit over the years, some by just ignorance, and what I mean by that is unlearned, and, and yet... We understand as, as people of God, it's not our duty to condemn the world. It's our duty to pray for others and our duty to stand for truth. But, but, but God is the only one that can change a person's heart. Listen to this preacher very carefully. Man's problem is not an exterior problem. And a lot of times we try to fix what's on the outside because that's the manifestation of what we see. But when Jesus comes into a person's life, he works from the inside out. And every one of our problems, I don't care who you are or what background you come from, we all have a heart issue that manifests itself on the outside. And there's only one that can fix the heart heart issues of mankind and that is the Lord Jesus Christ a personal relationship with God can you say amen? amen if the heart gets fixed everything else will follow because as the heart goes so goes the rest of man I love what that old Church of God song says Jesus on the inside Working on the outside, oh, what a change 
in me. Somebody say amen. amen. But understand this. Paul writes here in Romans chapter 5, which is so full of truth. There's meat on every word here in Romans 5. But Paul writes here that when we were without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Now, what causes a person to be ungodly? Is it the fact that they do certain things or certain sins? Is it what they do in general that causes a person to be ungodly? A true understanding of God's word would tell you and I that a person is ungodly when they do not have a personal faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what causes a person to be ungodly. You're not ungodly because you drink, smoke, cuss, chew, or hang out with those who do. You're ungodly when you are separated from the very presence of God. And you and I are separated from the presence of God when we do not have a personal faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. When you do not know him personally for yourself. And when you stand before God, Pastor Bill will not be there with you, mom or dad or your prayer partner or somebody that you greatly respected in the Lord will not be there with you. You will stand before God and give an account for your life personally. And the good news is for those who have trusted in Christ as their Savior, there is what we call the blood that covers you and I from our sins. As far as the east is from the west, they have been removed from us. Could we just stop here for about 20 or 30 seconds and thank God for the blood today that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I don't care who you are or how holy you may be perceived to be, we all need the blood. Can you say amen? We all got some things that we would just assume not talk about and not bring up. Somebody asked me the other day, are there any skeletons in your closet? Can I tell you, I've never met a person who didn't have skeletons in their closet. I'm not afraid of people that have skeletons in the closet. I am afraid of folks that have living stuff in the closet. But if it's a skeleton, that means it's dead. That means there's no skin to it. That means there's no heartbeat to it. And I am thankful that there may be some skeletons in your closet or my closet, but the blood of Jesus has covered our sins and removed them. Come on. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be washed white as snow. Somebody say amen. But yet the Bible says Christ died for the ungodly. What is the ungodly? Is the ungodly things that we do? No. The ungodly is simply being separated from the presence of God. A person who does not know the Lord, that does not have an understanding of God's presence in their life. Give me just a couple of moments here. Could I tell you, we are living in perilous times, as I mentioned to you from week to week. The, the hour in which we are living in is an hour when I don't think many of us thought we would live long enough to see some of the things that we are experiencing here in the world today. And I would not want to live one moment without God's presence in my life. I remember what one of the Old Testament prophets said, and he said, Lord, whatever you do, you could scold me, you can correct me, you can punish me, whatever you choose to take away from me, but God, do not take your presence from me. Why? Because I don't care what you and I have to walk through in this life, and we are living in perilous times. If you have God's presence in your life, you can walk through whatever tomorrow brings you and know I'm going to get through it because I have a power that is greater than that which is in the world. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Can you say amen? I don't know what tomorrow may bring. 
I love what the old song says, many things about tomorrow. I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. Neighbor, I don't know what tomorrow may bring in your life, but if you have a personal faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have a power, you have an enabler, you have a, a equipping a, a spirit that is on the inside of you that will give you strength and will give you help he will be that paracletos that one that goes along beside you that will never leave you nor forsake you and you can get through whatever tomorrow brings you because God is with you I wouldn't want to live a day without knowing that God was with me somebody say amen Christ died for the ungodly. Say that together with me. Christ died for the ungodly. Every one of us, what makes a person ungodly? When they have become separated from the presence of God. Quick Bible uh, study here for a moment. Genesis chapter 2 tells us the story of the fall of Adam and Eve in the garden. When mankind became separated from God's presence through their disobedience or through their sin. So what is sin? Sin is the willful disobedience of God's word. Say that together with me. Sin is the willful disobedience of God's word. What happened in the garden was Adam and Eve willfully disobey, uh, disobeyed what God had told them to do. And in so doing, suddenly their innocence was translated into consciousness or awareness. They were naked in the garden, but they did not realize that they were naked because they were walking and living in absolute, uh, the, the fullness of the presence of God. It didn't matter that they were naked, but they didn't even realize it. They weren't conscious. They weren't aware. But immediately when they disobeyed God, their innocence turned to consciousness and they suddenly became aware of their nakedness and they became ashamed. That's what sin does. Sin causes a shame to come upon your life. And in so doing, their eyes were open. They realized they were naked and immediately they tried to cover their shame. And they tried to cover it in natural means. And so what they did was they took fig leaves and they sewed them together. And they, they, they covered themselves and created a covering. And when Adam and Eve were covered, they began to hear the voice of God calling out, Adam, where art thou? And they had went and hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Give me 20 or 30 seconds just to relate this. No matter what you try and do, you can never hide from God. Doesn't matter what you do. You can't hide from God. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. You can hide from the preacher. You can hide from the church. You can hide from your family members. You can live some sort of deviant alternate lifestyle and, and, and feel like, well, I'm kind of in another circle, but yet you can never run from God. God shows up in the craziest of places. I mean, God shows up in crazy places. I remember one time Sally and I were in New Orleans and we had been at Brother Swaggart's for camp meeting. And uh, don't tell Brother Swaggart, but we took Good Friday night off. And we were, we were flying home on Saturday uh, from New Orleans. And we thought, well, after Friday morning service, we'll just drive down to New Orleans, have a nice meal, spend the night, get up the next morning and go home. And, and so we were there on Good Friday. Well, if you know much about New Orleans, you know it's a Catholic city. So they're in the middle of Lent. I mean, every steakhouse is empty in, 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 uh, in New Orleans during that time. So we went right in. They sat us next to the bar. And so we were there. We weren't in the bar. Okay, let's just get that right. We were just right next to the bar. And so while we were there, we were sitting there eating, and I thought it was really cool. Uh, we're, we're eating and enjoying. Well, they have a TV at the bar. Well, it, it was 6.55. I had noticed, well, this program went off, and 7 o'clock a new program came on. Guess what came on? Believe it or not, it was Jimmy Swaggart on television. <laughs> I thought Brother Swaggart's following us. He knows we're not in church tonight. <laughs> Brother Swaggart came on television and started preaching, and they were so preoccupied, the bartender and others, they didn't realize there was a preacher and a religious television show on in the bar. 
Sally and I laughed and chuckled just like you are. And, and it's a reminder to me that it doesn't matter where you are, God can always show up. Can you say amen? It, 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 it's amazing to me. It's amazing to me how that God will always show up. Even in the most crazy of your circumstances, God will be there. I don't know how many times that we have been in a situation where it just seemed like God showed up. Where we were in San Francisco one time, I was with the Perrys, and, and we thought nobody in San Francisco would know who we are. We were having fun playing downtown and, and visiting the city and, and, and all, how all of the streets are, Tracy and Libby. And uh, uh, me and Tracy were acting crazy. I'm not going to tell you everything we were doing, but let's just say we were acting crazy. We just knew nobody in San Francisco would know who Bill Bailey and the Perrys were. Well, could I tell you, God rattled our cage that day. We came out of a store, we're walking down the road, and suddenly we get those eyes looking at us. And they get bigger and bigger. And they walk up to us, they say, you're Tracy and Libby with the Perrys. And you're, you're Pastor Bill Bailey. We cannot believe we all, oh, this is incredible. Let's take a picture. And the whole time we're thinking, nobody is supposed to know who we are and where we are. God has a unique uh, sense of humor, doesn't he? Most of us could relate to something similar in our own life. Just understand that God is everywhere. And you cannot outrun God. And maybe you're here today, and, or maybe you're watching me this morning, and you're thinking, I, I'm, you know what? I'm not sure I want to be this close to God. There's things in my life right now. Maybe you're trying to compartmentalize your life and you kind of got your church over here, but you got your uh, lifestyle over here and you got this over here and you're trying to keep them separate. But can I tell you, God is a nosy God. As a matter of fact, one of the Old Testament names of God is jealous. He's jealous over you and he doesn't want anything else or anyone else to have priority or dominance in your life. And so you may try to compartmentalize your life but you know what God always shows up in every area of your life he's a nosy God he's a jealous God because he loves you with an everlasting and an eternal love he shows up no matter where you are or what you are doing so on this Valentine's Sunday morning I wanted to take sister Bailey to Walt Disney World and propose to her when we were dating. I had it all lined up. Matter of fact, I even told the church mothers, I told them what I had planned to do. They gave me special permission to take Sally to Disney World and stay overnight. Because Billy would never do anything ungodly. Because we know he's going to propose to her. They're going to get married. And so I had the, the blessing of the, the, the spiritual mothers in the house. But can I tell you, when I get to heaven, I'm going to heaven. But they're probably going to ask a few questions at the gate. But Sister Bailey, when it comes her time, there will be no questions asked. They'll just open the gates and say, come on in. She's a woman of God. And so when, when I told Sister Bailey what I planned to do, we were going to go to Disney and stay a couple of days. She said, no, we're not. I said, yes, we are. She said, no, we're not going there. We're not married. We're not spending the night together and not be married. I said, well, nothing's going to happen. She said, I know nothing's going to happen because we're not spending the night together. She said, we'll go spend the day together. Well, I didn't want to spend the day. I wanted to spend two days. I wanted to spend the night. She said, we're not doing that. We're not married. I said, well, nothing's going to happen. She said, I know nothing's going to happen, but nobody else knows nothing's going to happen. And we're going to avoid even the very appearance of evil. You don't have to amen that loud. So I got mad. I decided, well, I'm going to forget this. So there had been this other girl. I thought, well, I'm going to go out with. I'm going to ask her out. So I went out. We went bowling. 
And lo and behold, I look in the rear view mirror. And in the rear view mirror, there's my best bud at the time, and there's Sister Bailey following me. Mm. I'm like, is that really who I think it is? Sure enough, they followed me. They knew we were at the bowling alley, and then we went out, we rode out to the beach to see the sun set. Following me. Jealous, Lord, jealous. <laughs> Later, after, uh, after everything had calmed down and we'd, we'd kissed up, made up, and I asked her to marry me. Later on, she, she asked me, she said, you know, you, she wanted to know. She, she was inquisitive. She said, did you kiss her? I looked at her and said, no. I said, but you ought to know you were there everywhere we went. <laughs> You saw it all. Couldn't get away from you. <laughs> Pastor Bill, how are you going to bring this into your message? Just hang, hang tight. I'm a pro. God's love is a jealous love. He's going to follow you wherever you go. He loves you so much you show up at the most ungodly place and do the most ungodly thing. He'll still be there. He's the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. He's the one that makes you feel like, oh my God, why did I do that? Why did I go there? Why did I let myself? I did the very thing I said I would never do again. I went to the very place I said I'd never go again. I said the very thing I said I would never say again. And yet there's the convicting power of God. Con con condemnation comes from the world, comes from the enemy. But the convicting power of God comes from the Lord. And he said, listen, I saw what you did. I heard heard what you said. I knew who you were with, but I love you anyhow. Come on home. Get it right. Get washed in the blood. I trust today's telecast has been a blessing and an encouragement to you. You know, there's nothing like God's word that brings strength and brings help in our time of need. I'd love to pray with you. There's a link at the bottom of the screen with our email address. Why don't you send me a note? Let me know how we could pray for you. And we always love hearing from you. If you're ever in the Bradenton, Florida area, we'd love to have you join us for one of our in-person services, Sundays at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., Wednesdays at 7 p.m. And if you're outside of our local area, there's plenty of opportunity to follow us online. Most of our Sunday services are archived and streamed live so you can join us on Facebook or YouTube Live. And then we're on all of the other social media platforms like Twitter and Instagram as well. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching today's telecast. I pray it's been a blessing to you and look forward to seeing you at this same time next week.